Hey, my shatters. We are here with Michael J. Brown. He is the project architect of Cars. And Michael, so glad that you could join us today. Thank you. Really, really appreciate you taking the time. Now, how, how did you end up working on Cars? Um, it's I'm trying to keep it as short as story as I sure. can, but the, sure. the, the short answer of it is I come from a diverse background. I do show set and production design, and I'm also a licensed architect. So I go back and forth between show design and architecture. So my last job, I was uh, the production designer for Small World in Hong Kong. So when I was finishing up on that job, they asked me, you know, we have this job coming up. The Cars Land was already in the works. They said, would you be interested in being an architect for Cars Land? It's like right up my alley because I'm basically building a set. Right. That is what was in movies, but it's architecture. It's like it's a perfect marriage of both of those backgrounds. Excellent. So you were able to work very closely with Big Sky and uh, go back and forth with them on different design changes or kind of things like that. Yes. Uh, obviously, when you're dealing with a movie, you have what happens. Cars is a pioneer original family with Cody Oak Springs, but it's a boot. And a lot of things you want to work on is like gravity or keeping people cool or worrying about how they're going to get them on the ride. So when you start looking at all those different parts that have to go into making a building work, there's obviously you some pushes and pulls and things that have to happen, but you want to keep the outer look of the building to look to what people remember from the movie. So there's a lot of back and forth we fix art and we show them what we have and what we were doing and where things were changing and they had to change and all the things. Making sure that John Lasseter and Pixar were okay with it. So that would happen monthly you know, with them and all through the design process. They would work in models, both digital and physical. We would build physical models so they could get in and around space and understand the detailing that we were putting into the buildings that may not have been in the movies. Right. So that collaboration. Excellent. So, so you were able to build, you used physical models, but you also used uh, like CAD and computer aided design and things like that, right? Yes. To actually have three dimensional walkthrough oh, yeah. and visual intrusion type evaluation. Things that are a little harder to do in a physical model. You can get certain things that this model would love to do on the understand space and spatial relationship between them, but as you're starting to look at an existing theme park where we have influences that are outside when we call our firm or things that are within, we want to kind of limit that so we can create that placemaking opportunity. So we have to do things like uh, obviously the ornaments valley and the ornament range that you have here is serving here we also have hotels and things that are outside of our control. We want to be able to keep people where we want them to be. Right, so you're basically, what you did was you took the fictional world and you created a physical working environment for people to to enjoy and to experience. Yes, you know, that's kind of our goal is to build an environment that takes people to a certain place at time. Right. And if you that's outside then it just really ruins that moment. Right. All of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, I'm not in Disney Springs anymore. I am in Anaheim, California. Now, that, 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 seem, that seems to have been one of the major challenges of Cars Land, was creating that enveloping, that immersive feel. And you accomplished it nicely with the rock work, but were there any particular challenges to the land aside from that or what, what were some major hurdles you had to work on? Because we're also in a in an existing park, some of our challenges had to do with you know we can only go so far east, west, north, and south, so how do you fit Radiator Springs into this space? So we were obviously trying to figure out where we're going to go. How much of Radiator Springs can we fit in here? Uh, we 
meet the program, but also to meet the expectations of the guests to give you that feeling like you are here. So we, I think, did a great job because we picked up from Mayor and we went down to the courthouse. And I think we, we got you know, all the key elements in there uh, that are in the movie. Now there are some elements um, that are in the movie that aren't here that people may relate to, like the drive-in theater. Uh, and there are some additional downtown structures that in the movie uh, play a little bit at the moment and talk about you know, the town when it was thriving and Route 66 was going to close down and as the interstate bypass was down, so it was hard to close up. You can see that transformation from a thriving town to a town that's not doing as well. Right. So we had to unfortunately eliminate some of those downtown buildings just because of the space requirements. Right. Now, what, you, you mentioned the drive-in. Was, was that something that was in development? Is that still on the table? Is that something that might be coming in the future? I uh, never know. Um, I, I'll, I'll say it was at one point that was something we were looking at because we were trying to find room for it. I thought it was a neat element, sort of fit in with the whole car's vocabulary. Uh, but it was not a key element to telling the story of Radiator Springs and the It didn't stay in our program. Sure, you never know. Where was it supposed to have gone? Do you, were there, was it like over there? Or it, it evolved, it moved around quite a right. few places. So what is it that you're most proud of with, with regards to cars? Uh, I like the um, Close Viet Cafe. Because it, I think it's a really cool structure with the air filter and the valve covers. And the, the difficulties of making the valve cover stand up with a, you know, basically a hole in the bottom of the, of the column at an angle, uh, but then all the neon and that goes into it. But the other part, beyond just the, the architecture from the movie, is that we added a lot of the to the first movie. Obviously, Close Via Cafe has a stop or a place to get uh, refilled. In, in the movie, they, they did the perfect changeover to in the human world to be a, a restaurant. Right. But with the restaurant, we needed a kitchen, more dining space, and this and that. So we needed more building than what was in the movie. So where we are sitting right now, the terrace, and the showroom behind me was in the movie. So we got to an add story by adding the closed showroom to the and she was adding on what would she want to do. She wanted to do this Motown, Hoogie style you know, showroom from the 60s type architecture you'd see at an automobile showroom. So it was a great you know, add to what we had here. And again, we collaborated with Pixel with the designs and asked what we want to do, is what we'd like to do. And they would throw some ideas back at us, we'd throw ideas at us. And kind of narrowing down the many, many different styles and ideas to get where we are today. But at the end of it, you know, they were developing cars too at the same time. We, we said, you know, we think this should go into cars too. So, so what you came up with for the land actually ended up in parts of Cars 2. It did. It did. That's, wow. that's really cool. It's like, you know, I went and saw Cars 2 and we were still just the very beginning of the construction at that time. But I'm like, and you're like, I, I did that, I did that. Well, yeah, not, not just me, but a lot of people working together, you know, but it's still kind of cool that you know, right. we, we always talk about synergy within the company and trying to, with the studios or with the, the, the Walt Disney Imagineering and also Pixar, try to work together so that we can help enhance each other's product. Right. Now, lastly, are there any little Easter eggs that, that visitors should keep their eyes open for? Little, little surprises, little things you might have left? Uh, I mean, we like hidden Mickey type stuff, or are you talking about yeah, in jokes or hidden Mickey stuff? Something. Come on. They're everywhere. And Come on. Let me. Let me I, just give me one. I'll give you one. Okay. So in the motel office. Okay. If you look at where Sally is coming in the motel office, you look at her desk. There's traffic cones all over the place. Right. If you look real close, you see a homage back to the Toy Story. I'm going to work down here. Where in the movie where they were trying to cross the street, they were hiding under the traffic cones. Ah. Uh, 
I you'll see. see the, some of the traffic cones are lifted up and you'll see a buzz light year okay. underneath. So, all right. There's fun little things like that. And you just really have to look everywhere because they're, they're all over the place. I don't want to get in the way because that's, that's the fun of it. Oh, oh, I know. I know, I know, but we want to know. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time. And finally, what's your favorite color car to ride? Blue. That's Blue? my car. That's your car. My car is about the same color as my shirt. Oh, well, I guess, I guess so. so. If you're ever on a car that has an MB on it, you'll know. That's it's, your car. That's my car. So they named, they, they gave everyone that worked on the project a car? Uh, a lot of people did. So yeah, the license plates are Imagineers or Pixar people. They're, Excellent. They're the first and last initial. Uh, well, a little bit. we'll look out for the car and we'll go take a spin. <laughs> Please don't. You, you're covered, right? You have insurance? Yes. Yeah, because, okay, good. All right. Well, again, this was uh, Michael, and he was a project architect and on Cars Land. And we really appreciate you uh, taking the time out to talk with us. You're welcome. All right. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you.